The question is, did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Now, it is rather ironic that I'm doing this video, because just a few weeks ago I said, hey, we don't really talk about Star Wars very much because we just think it's trash nowadays. But I am just a little bit interested in what they might do with this concept of the Acolyte, because I've not watched any of the live action Star Wars shows because they destroyed Star Wars with the sequels. Everyone knows this, some people attribute it to The Last Jedi, some people put it towards The Rise of Skywalker, it's The Last Jedi if you don't know, but the shows just didn't do it for me. The Mandalorian, not seen one bit. Boba Fett, not seen nothing. And even though Ahsoka Tano is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, I didn't watch her show. And I like Rosario Dawson, but I didn't buy it. And I didn't want it, so I didn't watch it. But this, maybe, maybe, there's a chance it'll be good. Take my opinions with a grain of salt, a mound of salt, or a mountain of salt, because I am rather salty at what Star Wars has become. But we've got to do fact of the day. Page number 84, fact number four. The sun takes 220 million years to orbit the galaxy, a journey it has made 20 times so far. We do get them occasionally. Yesterday we had another one where the fact somehow tied into the video, the sun does indeed go around the galaxy and we go around the sun. Hey, no original the comic in. Right now we're gonna be doing a reaction to Star Wars The Acolyte. The first trailer has been dropped and my big theory with this is, is this really about Darth Plagueis the wise. Is it a baby Darth Plagueis chopping about, doing some shenanigans? Is that the basis of this show or is that where this series is gonna end? And I'm not saying season, I'm saying series because if this hits, they're gonna make three, four, five seasons of it. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to say. What I do know what to do is to say, let's get to this trailer. Let's go. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. Well, that's a danger. Fire. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. What is that? Aha. Aha. Okay. Color me impressed. I thought I was going into a dumpster fire and it turned out to be kind of interesting. I will say the visual effects, solid. A little bit hit and miss with certain flying objects through the sky. But other than that, good job. The practical stuff, the physical stunt work. Maybe they've learned. Maybe they've learned that what they did in the sequels was so bad versus what happened in the prequels that they may have reverted a little bit to going, you know, maybe we need the wires, maybe we need to do some fun stuff here. It looked like they were doing the business, and I like that. I like that a lot. Also, we got the yellow lightsabers. For the first time, other than Rey using it in the main continuity in the movies, yellow lightsabers, if you don't know, are the Jedi Sentinels. They're the ones who protect the temple. They do that side of things for the Jedi. They aren't really the level of a, of a Jedi master, because that's too high. They aren't with the blue lightsabers because that means you basically lean towards the 
physical aspect of fighting more and the green lightsabers essentially mean you're more in tune with the force so it's kind of just somewhere in the middle there but I'm glad to see the yellow lightsabers popping up because they've always been a favorite of mine whenever I played the games. Yellow, top tier. Yellow, one of the better ones, honestly. Yellow better than blue, just that's my opinion. Some people disagree, that's fine. My opinion, grain of salt, mound of salt, mountain of salt. And the thing is, from some of these shots, it really does feel Star Wars-y. It has that element of the prequels and I think that makes sense to a degree because this is set pre-Anakin, pre even Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan. I think it's either 50 or 100 years before the events of The Phantom Menace, which is why in my mind, I feel like there's a chance that Plagueis gets involved in this story. Maybe the Acolyte is actually Plagueis's apprentice, or maybe the Acolyte is Plagueis's master from the way they're gonna set this up. Just a theory, you never know. You don't know what you don't know, but I don't know, so I might as well throw it out there. That might be what's happening. Overall, I would say this didn't look super cheap. I think that was a problem with the Ahsoka show. There were moments in the trailer which I just thought, why have you shot this like this? It feels slow, it feels empty. This didn't feel like it was lethargic, especially in the fight scenes. It felt like it was dynamic. Well done. I'm shocked to be saying it, but other than the kind of campiness in some ways of some of the shots and the designs of the, the suits and the outfits. I think it looked a little bit cosplay -y. I don't know why, but it felt a little bit like that. But then again, fan films get made all the time. Some of those are really, really top notch. So maybe you just have to look at this and say, this is like a very, very well produced fan film. It's got a lot of money backing it. It's hopefully got a good story. And if it's really great, then I think most people are going to be happy. I'll watch the first episode. If it's good, I'll let you know. If it's bad, I'll let you know. But if it's shit, I will not watch the whole show. That's just how this goes. We only have so much time and I can't be wasting it on dog shit. So hopefully this ain't dog shit.